And good morning. Today we gather to celebrate the Friday of the fifth week of Lent. Our prayers are still with you as we still miss you. And we hope and pray that you are doing as advised, keeping that social distance from each other, sheltering down, praying with us on this website or on our Facebook, and just being connected with us through the use of the social media. And so let's begin now. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the grace and peace of God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. And with your spirit. And now as we gather around the table, Lord, we pause. As once again we acknowledge our sins and get ourselves ready to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, sisters, that I have greatly sinned. In my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and what I failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, of a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all now to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have have mercy. mercy. And let us pray. Pardon the offenses of your people, we pray, O Lord, and in your goodness set us free from the bonds of the sins we have committed in our human weakness. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped, then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will will stumble. They will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them. For to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In my distress I call upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. In my my distress distress, I call upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. I love you, O Lord, my strength. O Lord, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. My God, my rock of refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Praised be the Lord, I exclaim, and I am safe from my enemies. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. The breakers of death surged round about me. The destroying floods overwhelmed me. The cords of the the netherworld enmeshed me. The snares of death overtook me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God. From his temple, he heard my voice, and my cry to to him reached his ears. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. The Lord be with you. And And with your spirit. A reading from his holy gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. The Jews picked up rocks to stone Jesus. Jesus answered them, I have shown you many good works from my Father. For which of these are you trying to stone me? 
The Jews answered him, We are not stoning you for the good work, but for blasphemy. You, a man, are making yourself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said you are gods. If it calls them gods to whom the word of God came, and scripture cannot be set aside, can you say that the one whom the Father has consecrated and sent into the world blasphemes, because I said I am the Son of God? If I do not perform my Father's works, do not believe me. But, I, but if I perform them, even if you do not believe me, believe the works so that you may realize and understand that the Father is in me, and I am in the Father. Then they tried to arrest him, but he escaped from their power. He went back across the Jordan to the place where John first baptized, and there he remained. Many came to him and said, John performed no sign, but everything John said about this man was true. And many there began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's really hard to believe that next week is Holy Week, especially since we've sort of been sheltered down and confined to our places in our homes that uh, we can't get out and really involve ourselves in the celebration of this Holy Week. But the Church gives us a little glimpse of what this Holy Week is all about coming up. And it comes basically from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. It's a foretaste in a sense of the, the passion that we'll be listening to, not only on Palm Sunday, but especially on Good Friday. And what we find in that book of the prophet Jeremiah is that there is the just one and that everybody is denouncing him. Even his friends have left him. Yet, he remains innocent. He proclaims that even though everybody else has abandoned him, everybody else is putting him to shame, Yet he remains ever faithful to the will of the Father. And the beautiful part is, is that, as the reading tells us, the evildoers will stumble and fall, but the just one will remain. As I said, it's sort of a foretaste of what Good Friday is all about, because in that Good Friday experience, we find Jesus laying down his life for us. And even though evil seems to triumph, we know with Easter Sunday that it doesn't. That the resurrection truly proclaims who this Jesus is. That he is that Son of God. And that nothing can destroy him. Death and resurrection, defeat and triumph, that's going to be the theme of this next week as we engage ourselves in this Holy Week celebration. Our Gospel story then today continues that, sort of continues the plot against Jesus. They accuse him of blasphemy, making himself out to be God. And so they're ready to stone him. That was the practice by the Jewish people. If somebody makes themselves out to be God or something along those lines, something against God, um, they were liable to being stoned to death. Crucifixion was never in the Jewish vocabulary, in a sense. Crucifixion was a part of a Roman practice. It was one of the worst kinds of punishment a person could experience. But whatever the case, Jesus asked them, why are you stoning me? They said, because you're trying to make yourself out to be God. And then he says something rather interesting. Well, if you don't believe that I'm that son of God, at least believe the works that I do. And look at the works that I do. I raise the dead. I bring new life to other people. And only God can do that. And so start believing in the works that I do rather than what I say I am. And if you truly believe in the works that I do, then you will draw that conclusion that 
that Jesus is truly God. But they didn't want to hear that, and they were ready to arrest him right then on the spot. But nevertheless, he, he escapes. And sometimes throughout our lives, we're engaged in this human condition, and sometimes we too see the works of God in our midst. And I, I firmly believe that God continues to work in and through our lives. We call that moments of grace. He works through, especially you know, in this time of crisis, people going out of their ways, in extra ways, to be there for each other. Those are the works of our God. And sometimes we become blinded to them, not realizing that God is working through human beings in our lives to assist us. That God hasn't abandoned us. That God is still present to us. But hopefully we're not going to be like the crowd of the people that tried to arrest Jesus and become so blind that we fail to see those moments of grace, those moments of God's presence in our lives. And so as we continue our celebration today, let's just ask our Lord to open up our minds, to open up especially our eyes, to be able to see the works of God in our midst, <clears throat> so that we can truly proclaim that Jesus, yes, is, is alive and active. He's present in his risen body, in his church, and his works continue through the works of the people who truly believe in him and make him a part of their lives. And so with, great, with gratitude for all the things people do for us, let's continue our Eucharist as we pray for them and for each other. For all ministers of the church, may the Lord bless them in their demonstration of Christ's love through good works. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all government leaders, may the Holy Spirit guide them in their work and encourage them in policies that recognize the dignity <coughs> of human life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who struggle to meet their daily needs, may God strengthen them with a spirit of fortitude and perseverance. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, may Christ enter our hearts more deeply as we prepare to enter Holy Week. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, may the Lord grant them eternal rest in the kingdom of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's pray for all those who truly show God's works among us. And we find that in our health care workers, those doctors and nurses who continually to serve us in, in the ministry of healing in our hospitals, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That each of us will open our eyes to see the many works of our God in our midst through the friends in our lives, through those people who touch our hearts and our lives, and that we may never be, be blinded from seeing God's works. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we offer you all of these prayers. We ask you to answer them in and through your Son, Jesus Christ, and our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the vine and the work of human hands, that will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, O merciful God, that we may be worthy to serve ever fittingly at your altars, and there to be saved by constant participation through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks now to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for though the saving passion of your Son, for through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty. Since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed, and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim now. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, <coughs> heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Zion in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Zion in the highest. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. Even when about to give his life to set us free, for when he about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined the table, he himself took bread in his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, in a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And do this in memory of me. And the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with this very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Thomas John our Bishop and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. And through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Savior's command now form divine teaching we dare to say together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, gracious to grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and saved from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming, coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And gracious grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. Thank you. Let's offer each other the sigh of peace. And Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. And blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let's pray our act of spiritual communion. I be, my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you are already there, I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. And let us pray. May the unfailing protection of the sacrifice we have received never leave us, O Lord, and may it always drive far from us all that would do us harm, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that your servants who seek the grace of your protection may be free from every evil and serve you in peace of mind, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, bless you now, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you for celebrating with us. Just a reminder, this coming weekend is Palm Sunday. We will bless palms, and they will be out for your you to come by and pick them up. They will be in the narthex of our church. So sometimes Sunday morning, um, please uh, come by and pick up whatever palms you need. Um, they will be available to all of you. Our celebration, I invite you to watch also on the YouTube or whatever you want to call it, website, Facebook, um, whatever terms we want to use. Um, just stay connected with us. That's what we want. We just pray for you and we continue to tell you over and over how much we miss you. Um, celebrating the Eucharist just by ourselves is not the easiest because we miss your, your faces and we miss your presence and we miss your support and encouragement. So continue staying well, staying healthy, and sheltering down, and hopefully in time that all of this will be a memory for all of us. So take care and have fun at home, and just enjoy yourselves, and may God's graces be with you. Amen. <laughs>